Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whitehead. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent. that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show ah welcome back welcome back i'm back Welcome back. Welcome me back. Thank Welcome you. you back. Uh, why the fuck am I still in the quarantine corner? Like, <laughs> oh, you, you know you what? You set me up all the way over. You still don't want to be close to me? No, it's, it's not that. You no, actually you just, look good in the corner. I like oh. the books in the background. I like well, the pictures in the background. If anybody likes looking good on camera, it's, you know, <laughs> I guess it's me. Um, what's up, everybody? What are we on? I missed episode 28. Episode 29. 29. Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. I'm, I'm happy to be back. Thanks for covering for me. Hey, man. Last hey, week. Yep. Um, Did my best. How'd you like being... Uh, I hate the, it. Yeah. Yeah. Just get a little, hey, a little nervous. A little nervous. Look, yeah. got, the look, got the nerves. <laughs> Shit was funny because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I listened to the episode and yep. I can, I can tell exa- like that you're nervous and sort of like not breathing. Right. <laughs> um, but I don't know that other people would be able to pick up on that oh, because man. they don't, they don't, you know, it wasn't so you and Stacy made it sound like it was going to be awful it, to me and, it and felt like yeah. the worst show i, I listened ever to done. it i was like oh i mean that was like fucking 20 seconds of owen hyperventilating because he was <laughs> he was nervous and uh that's funny because you showed up confident as shit to take over. I did. And you were like, you told Stacy that I hit the button and yeah. then all of a sudden yeah. the nerves happened. on your drive up. You were running through it in your head yep. and practicing yep. and all that stuff. Yep. It's funny how that shit goes. It's man. crazy. I forgot half of what I was going to say. For- forgot how old you are. You forgot your fucking all third child's name. Yep. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome back everybody. I'm happy to be back. Um, we have a guest in the room today. We do. His name is AJ Richards. AJ is right. um, short for Abelnackle Josephine. Right there next no, to it. Uh, yeah. what, 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 what's what, the A? The A AJ Richards. A yep. is A is a Benedi. And J just the letter. What? Yeah, my parents oh. were undecided, so they're like, ah, fuck. Couldn't it, choose between what, Jer- J- Jimmy Jeremiah. Or or, yeah, <laughs> Jimmy or Jimmy. A- Abba, say it. I can't. A Benedi. A Benedi. Where yep. does this name come from? From the Book of Mormon. Really? So, like, yep. who's this character? Or person? So, in the Book of Mormon, he was this prophet that stood up against this evil king. Okay. And when he was telling him, you need to change your shit or you're all going to burn, they tried to, basically, the story is they tried to grab him and put him in prison, but he was protected by God until he finished his message, right? Oh, okay. And then he delivered the message, the, this, uh, this, you know, change your ways type deal, and... Once he was done delivering the message, they tied him to a stake and burned him to death. All right. Yikes. But when they burned him to death, he put out a warning to the king, you know, whatever you do to me basically is going to happen to you. So then in the story, a few years later, whatever the, the timeline was, their their kingdom was being overrun because of the wickedness of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, this king's, like, subordinates, right, his people of his court, he fled with them, and they're like, we're leaving our families behind. What's you're you're a shitty leader. Like mm-hmm. we need to get back to our families, and they wouldn't do it, or he wouldn't do it, and so they tied him to a tree and burned him. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So anyway, I'm glad I asked story. you that question because we just got a fucking Mormon history lesson. You right just there. a Benedi, a Benedi, <laughs> a Benedi, a Benedi. I'm glad you went with AJ and not like Ben. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that. Yeah. That's funny because Grandma Benedi. wanted me to name Ben. Really? And and so I actually didn't get a name for a year. The child, the child. Hold of on. Name. Before I forget, yep. I'm glad we're on this name Ben because I got a slapper ready to go nice. nice and it and the guy who showed me this his name is ben and he's this dude in, oh so okay so there's i go to the gym i go to is lvac the the bro gym i go to and there's there's a dude there he's like my height and thick he's really good looking thick boy he's fucking he's, he's the coolest person in that gym i think you know and sometimes he talks to me <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah and uh we were talking about music one day and uh, or I said I was listening to a good song, so he's you know I I told him what the song was, and he's like, "Have you heard of this band?" I was like, "No." 
I was like, hit me. And usually like when people give me music suggestions, I don't like it. Right. Cause I'm pretty, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty active in finding music. I like, and I listen to a lot of stuff and, um, but this is, so this guy, Ben at LVAC gave me this and, uh, the band is called harm's way. And the song is called human carrying capacity. And it's just straight fucking metal and it's like it, and, and as soon as i played it i was like oh oh yeah and i was doing squats that day he played it for me too so i was getting into it and nice. it's like that uh when metal goes like machine gun fire sounding when the drum beat oh, yeah, sounds yeah. like a fucking 50 cal yep. i oh, ejaculate yeah. the double, you know? kick. <laughs> double kick. yeah yeah but when it but it has to have like the right pace and tone yeah mm. and it's just like oh lock and load motherfucker so the Good. slapper today thanks ben from LVAC, um, band is Harm's Way. Song is called Human Carrying Capacity. Nice, nice. I fucking love it. It's on my liked songs on Spotify. So what kind of music do you listen to when you Everything. work out, AJ? Uh, you know, so. Specifically though, yeah. uh, Metcons, I do like uh, EDM type stuff. Yeah. Because I try to keep pace to that, yeah. that beat. And when I'm dragging ass and all of a sudden you've got that real heavy fast beat yeah it's and it's like a like dude, so edm electronic music we say that all the time on the podcast is i i listen to i'm known for listening to metal i think most people just associate with me with metal because i share that quite often but yep. in my uh, metcons or wads yep. electronic music man it, it keeps you going but yep. it keeps your heart rate low like yep. metal makes you aggressive <laughs> you're just yeah. like and i used to listen to metal and i used to redline at about three minutes and 17 seconds into the workout <laughs> you know <laughs> and we're yeah. Uh, you sent me something recently. That's the kind of stuff I like to train with. Like if that was longer, what I send you, the one that your your oh you, no. yeah my yeah. intro song your yeah, intro that, song the fucking heater. I have to send that to you on Dropbox or something like that. Don't yeah, I? maybe. So yeah. I guess I guess we should say why the fuck you're here. So AJ, <laughs> AJ, <laughs> we've talked about late uh, over the past few weeks the competition I have coming up. Yeah, the competitive fitness championship. Yep used to be known as rush club Mm -hmm. aj started the whole goddamn thing right started the whole damn thing yeah um and uh uh i met you when did i do my first i did my first rush club in 2016 yep february 2016 back when you didn't know the difference between uh ak and bk and i tried to tell you (laughs) and you're like oh don't sweat it derek you got this i'm like this motherfucker just abadiah does not (laughs) abenadiah does not understand (laughs) i didn't and i'm on the sideline going owen owen last week on the show Thought that Mike Gallardo had two legs because he was wearing pants. Yep. I was listening to the show. Yep. Oh, and you shit. Got, and you thought, but that's that's the difference between exactly. above and below knee. Is if a below knee puts pants on, you can't even tell that that nope. motherfucker is an amputee. Dude, he, I yeah. had no clue he is. And, and it's an not amputee. to take away, he's a great below knee. Right. And, athlete right but it's just it's it's nice is they're two totally different things you know? yeah and, so I, and i did i did pretty well in that did workout. awesome yeah um, it was he, definitely he when it me. came to the uh ground overhead yeah that's where it was like oh yeah fuck, there's right. a big difference in that yeah mm-hmm. when you have two hinge points with your knees yeah yep. you you have so much more leverage yeah so um actually we can talk about that I, i'm gonna uh we can talk about that first rush club a little bit because that was funny because i i watched the video of that recently um two things are funny my my ankle i so i had a fake leg yep. and a human leg and my ankle i had like three ace bandages on my ankle for that because my foot and ankle was like blue and purple because in training at the gym i was doing some rope climbs and i came down and there was a ton of slack of rope on the floor oh. and i came down and i rolled my ankle so fucking bad really i thought i broke it and it was like a week and a half before the i didn't event. know that yeah of course and I so yeah. like i just that's why i had like a ca- like i had my shit bandaged yep. i had the calf sleeve on and a knee sleeve too i was just yep. like full support i was like so that, that shit was killing me yeah but that was well uh, the other thing too is because you're uh ak you removed your leg which right. took time i know man every yeah. time you went up the freaking yeah. rope and yep. he mm-hmm. didn't have to do that right so there was a time loss there yeah there was because i was we were here. we were uh we were neck and neck and it's yep. and but we got to the barbell and maybe he was like a rep or two ahead of me yep. by the time i had my leg on i think he was at like seven or eight yeah and that's when i was that's when i was just like oh uh, this is over. I yeah. mean, you get that far behind. Yeah, in a, exactly. In a one-on-one, unless he fucking tanks, but he's not gonna because he's a good athlete. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're, so basically ho- you're thing, hoping yeah. for disaster then, at that dude, point. So yeah. this was my first uh, Rush Club. It, back then, it was called Rush Club. Now it's called uh, CrossFit Competitive or Competitive no. Fitness Championship. Yep. CFC. Yep. Um, Mike Gallardo wins. 
And in these events, that's supposed to stop the event. And yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> I just kept going. Yeah. And AJ, I'm like, whoa, he's going to finish. Yeah. You're fucking bad I, I thought and I was supposed to like, finish the workout. So I'm just my time. There, like uh, crushing through. I think I still made the time cap. Right? You did. Yeah. yeah you so did. that was fucking yep. hard. That was a fat. That was like a seven minute. Yep. Time cap workout. And then you came up to me afterwards. <laughs> what did I do? You said you fucking destroyed the bathroom. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh dude. I went, I went hardest. That was so like, that was, um, these are lessons I've learned on yeah. uh, how to not take stimulants and stuff before you go full throttle and shit. Yeah. Right. Like after that event, I just, I ran to the bathroom and I was puking between my legs while I diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> and after drinking a beer yeah. immediately yeah. on stage, yeah. somebody mm -hmm. threw him some cores yeah. up there and they're just like, yeah. and I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that's funny. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That workout was tough. In seven minutes, it was um, a legless rope climb, 20 chest to bar. And I was so new to the world of um, functional, functional fitness. fitness. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, only learned chest to bar pull ups a few weeks. I had to learn them for that. Oh, really? I, I wasn't an RX athlete or anything like that yet, you know? Dang. So it was a uh, legless rope climb. Those are pretty tall, too, like good 20 yeah. foot or yeah, something. Yeah, it was, I think it was uh, 15 to 18 feet. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was so it was for legless, there. when you're repping that, that's, yeah, it was that's up a lot there. of work. Um, so rope climb, 20 chest to bar, rope climb, 20 shoulder to overhead. And then Gallardo got to do push press, but I have yep. to sit there and strict press. I flew through those motherfuckers. Yep. And then a rope climb, and then 20 burpees to plate, mm -hmm. then a rope climb, then 20 snatches, and there's 95 pounds on the barbell, and then you do a rope climb. Yeah. And I think he finished like 447 or something. He crushed. Yeah. I mean, he did yeah. great, man. You know, yeah, he, he, really but he still good. wasn't that far ahead of you. Right. I remember yeah. it was still pretty damn close, but yeah. between removing the leg and have to put it on and off, and then strict you know, muscle, muscle snatching muscle 95 snatching. Yeah. pounds for 20 And at reps. that point, I'm so gassed. I, um, Dude. at that time I couldn't, or I really still can't cycle 95 yeah. for like tens or something. Right. Um, cause it, uh, cycling, cycling barbells is different for me. Cause if, if I want to utilize my human leg and like get a little jump, then I, what happens is my prosthetic moves. And so the next oh. rep, my hips and feet aren't square. Oh. So if I'm cycling a barbell, I have to stay as strict and muscly yep. as possible. Otherwise shit gets fucky, yep. you know? Yep. And so actually ripping at what I would do, I would just rip singles mm -hmm. now um, because I can use the leg and then for 95 pounds, it doesn't matter. Like you'll see yeah. coming up though, 135 pound um, cleans. cleans that I have on Saturday. I just, you know, I'll rip, I'm training to rip singles. I'm ready nice. to fucking cycle if I have to. Right. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, that was a lot of fun. And I lost that. And that was actually a big turning point in my um, athletic career there. That's when I was like, um, I need to step it up. What was it about that? I don't like losing AJ. Yeah. Well, I mean, about <laughs> that. So was it something about that particular environment? Because there's, there's competitions happening all the time everywhere. Right. And the whole idea of this was head to head. So we can put you in divisions that, that, actually test you you know if you're a lightweight if you're josh bridges and you go against freaking yeah. somebody your size equal to your capacity yeah. i guess i guess since we're talking about it real quick break down the cfc and we'll talk yeah. about it after the show okay to let the listener the point of today the, yeah. the topic of the show is uh one of my favorite topics mm -hmm. me <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm turning the, I'm turning the, turning yeah. the tables on aj's you aj's gonna aj for the event this week and he wanted to do an interview with me and i said i'll do an interview with you but you got to drive to my house and do yep. my podcast at my podcast time right um and so he's yep. here to do um we're, we're killing a couple birds with one stone here sure. but uh um uh so we're gonna get into your interview of me but let's just let them know since yeah. we're talking about it anyways yeah. cfc what is it so cfc uh originally rush club the concept is head-to-head -head weight class competition for functional fitness basically i wanted to take the concept of the ufc where these title divisions people can excel in the individual weight classes and become you know superstars known for their talent at that level and then i applied it to functional fitness right because i just i could see the opening there i i watched people getting to the crossfit games the highest platform for functional fitness uh and then always the winners were like 5'8 to 5'11, 195 pounds to 205 pounds. Like sure. biomechanically, that's who's going to win the yeah. overall fitness. Mm -hmm. But there was an opportunity to see people at a lighter weight 
just crush it against somebody else at that same exact weight. Yeah, your lightweight, the Rush Club lightweight men's that Lipsy. What's his? What's Vincent his? Vincent Lipsy. Dude, that guy's a fucking. That and guy's a strength? lightweight with the strength of a fucking super heavyweight. It's nuts. Oh, wow. And so, like these, like the the guy, the mm-hmm. people that held the Rush Club title, and all the all the titles are up for grabs now. Yeah, right. Because CFC is a whole new damn yep. thing. But the people who held the titles back in the day, they were like your legit elite athletes, and yep. you can't. This is. This is, um, and I like your attitude with the competition. If somebody's like, oh, I can't do that. You're like, well, sorry, you're not, you're just not, yeah. you're, you, you don't have what it takes to be on our stage. Especially and we when, don't apologize mm-hmm, for that. Right. And I mean, nope. go ahead and try harder, do better. But everybody out here yeah. is fucking just to be on the stage. You earn your spot yeah. as one of the elites. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, th- where we saw that show up the most was when we added adaptive divisions yeah. and we added adaptive divisions because there's nowhere else it works so well, right? Because I can put you and uh, Marcus the Hayward amputee. below the oh, knee, above right. the knee. <laughs> yeah. I can Back put before, you. Yeah. But I'm, I mean, I'm I can put fun, those yeah. two people together. And and like, dude, I flew a kid from Ecuador for the above the elbow title because all I need are two people in that division to make yeah. a legitimate competition. Right. Everything else, you need like 10, 15 people. So I'm watching yeah. these large scale competitions where you've got above the knee below the knee above yeah, the elbow, that's all why one that's heat. why that's why cfc works for adaptive competition yeah. and this isn't to shit on like so like no crossfit doesn't have an adaptive division wadapalooza right. to date has done the best job as mm-hmm. far as like a big competition but it's just and and it, they they do great but that's there's right. no way around you can't make a level the thing about see it's a level playing field mm-hmm. me versus somebody else with my exact disability right all right and then for like, like, and then wheelchair on wheelchair yep. and then missing an arm above the elbow, missing yep. an arm below the elbow, um, you know, things like that. Uh, because like, so Wadapalooza, it's like, I call it a, a, a cripple cornucopia. <laughs> 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 like funny. you got me next to a dude missing his hand yep. next to a person in a wheelchair next to a woman with cerebral palsy right next to a dwarf. Right. Right. And it's just, it's not a level playing field, but then yep. if, and then, and then it's a dog and pony show. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And, and, and a lot of the, and a lot of the adaptive athletes out there, they, um, you know, uh, they, they, just, they don't, they don't train, right. They don't have the champion mindset. Yep. They're there to have a good time to push themselves and that's all well and good. Right. But, um, well, th- that, I compete to win. Yeah, totally. And, and, it's and and then there's a couple people there too, like Casey Acre. He crushes mm-hmm. everything. Casey Acre yeah. is missing his hand. Yep. Um. And and he's there to win. But it's like if I'm missing, I don't like that kind of stuff because if I go there and I fucking crush, and but I take second, then some guy who doesn't have my disability gets to go out and be like, oh, I I whooped Derek White's ass. I don't know what the yeah. fuck he's talking. Like fuck that. I don't yeah. like that. You know. Yeah. It's not like, an equal test. Yeah. Right. You know. Yep. Um. And so it'd be if I did, and I just don't want to. I just don't do that. I don't right. do things. That's why I've always competed against able-bodied people mm-hmm. in regular competitions. You know, because if if you step into that arena, mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's it's for real. It's on, but it's not a level playing field, right. and I don't like that. Right. And so that's what I love about CFC. It's just me versus somebody else yep. with my same disability. And we find out who is the best. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's you're it. The, like you're in the title legit, and we'll bring you from anywhere in the world. Yeah. If you're training at that level, mm-hmm. we've that's, had well, people start to follow us from different countries. Now you got the Australian, the dude from Australia, Tommy. Yep. yep. He that, started, yeah, I think he's, he's fucking, he's good. Yeah. That was uh, I did the Wadapalooza qualifiers like a year and a half ago, just for fun. I did the mm-hmm. first three. And I'm not used to losing to AKs ever, <laughs> ever. I've been yep ahead of the pack, um, you know, in CrossFit. Carver and you know Carver's been out of the game now because he got that yeah. uh, surgery and right. stuff like that. He was always mm-hmm. great, and I'm so you I'm were going to take him I'm, on. I'm, at I'm one sad point. that yeah, yeah um, that we didn't get to uh, yeah handle that business, you yeah. know. Um, but uh, so I did this qualifier, and this fucking guy from australia beat me by like 11 reps and i i'd been training what? in powerlifting so i wasn't doing cross yeah yeah right right, you know? right and i was like what the fuck is that <laughs> shit who's this fuck guy that. um yeah but then i but then in workouts two and three i fucking crushed the field I yeah was like fuck these motherfuckers yeah. and then i was like okay i'm done <laughs> yeah. okay, like, okay i'm done okay like yeah. you know but i wasn't used to losing man yeah mm-hmm. well it, like you said there's not been a platform for that community to that for the, wants for, us to really excel for the elites of the community. That's right. People like, cause like there's adaptive athletes that live the life 
mm-hmm. of a champion and yep. they, they want to be a champion, but there's nowhere for us yep. that, and we can't make a living. And I know part of your, um, you know, your, uh, goals Goal. mm-hmm. for CFC is to allow athletes to make a living like where we yep. where we compete and we win 30 40 50k number one because that's yep. that's the, the like the difference between me and matt fraser is the paycheck when you win yep or the yep. or the or the opportunity right to even try to get that paycheck you right know? i live every fucking day the same as someone like that you that's know, right with training eating recovery mm-hmm. mental preparation family life and actually above i go above and beyond him i cook my own fucking food <laughs> well <motherfucker>. so <laughs> and, and, <laughs> well and this this evils the, evens the playing field not yeah. just in divisions mm-hmm. but it also will even the playing field in terms of earning potential because it's got nothing to do with the division it's got everything to do with the character yeah right when when ronda rousey was the champion in ufc yeah and then she lost to Holly Holm. Mm-hmm. What happened? Yeah. That division disappeared. It had nothing to do with the division. It was the character of the person that held yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. And so now you could have, let's say Matt Frazier was the heavyweight champion of CFC and you're the uh, above the knee champion of CFC. It's the character that's going to drive the paycheck. Yeah. And that puts it on them to develop that side of themselves, right? right. Sometimes we have people come on the stage where they're, they're not very... Um, they, they don't know how to promote themselves or they're not promotable in general. Yeah. So that's not got anything to do with me. So that's what I, I love yeah. that. Cause I'm also like, I'm an entertainer. Showman. I'm yep. an, enter, you know, I like that, uh, yeah. uh, aspect of it, you yeah. know? Um, and so it's, it's sort of like wrestling meets UFC meets CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm gonna C- say I'm gonna say like we CrossFit is CrossFit. CrossFit that's right. Is, we know it, that's the sport. Well, and listen, the new CEO it. that came on board. Mm-hmm. I listened to his uh, interview on YouTube. Uh, it, uh, he did a, a uh, town hall meeting, mm-hmm. and he said, "Look, CrossFit's a platform." Meaning there are dozens of businesses that employ a ton of people and make a lot of money because of CrossFit. We're not going to ignore that. Like we want to support that because right. the more businesses out and I'm like music to my fucking ears because yeah. I got sued by the old guy <laughs> yeah. last time. That's why for using Rush the Club word. went away. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm bringing fucking people to your yeah. gyms don't, and you're and So this say. guy's like, no, let's, let's support the community because the more people doing this, yeah. Yeah. the more people go into these gyms. Yeah. So it's like the NBA suing somebody for uh, saying they're going to have a basketball tournament. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> you know, like that's what it is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what is this flag football? Can't call it that yep. flag running, throwing a ball Yeah. Yep. Yep. Gonna, like functional flag throwing and catching and running <laughs> and removal of flag. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like fuck you guys. I'm going to take yeah. a quick break. Make Perfect. my smoothie. We're going to come back. Um, we're going to see Let's what your interview skills are like. All right. And I'm going to answer your questions. And just fair warning, like you are asking, there's different versions of Derek. You're getting uh, fight week. Yep. Ego. Maybe I'll be a bit more confident and egotistical than I normally am, but I'll Good. try to right. play both sides. That's all right. I'm going to go make a smoothie. I'll be right back. Okay. Cool. Are we back? We're now back. that I'm in a bad fucking mood. Cause Man, you, you, you guys are talking you business dorks shit. You're talking about gym shit. You're not talking about business shit. You're talking about, you know, how to, how to accomplish something without working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just pay the guy that did the work that got mm-hmm. the eyeballs that then. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's good. I got my smoothie. Awesome. All right. So you are, you interview all the athletes for yep. the competition is this Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll tell you guys where you can watch and stuff like that. And so I didn't want to do another, so this is your interview. This is yeah. my athlete interview and you yeah. do this with all the athletes. Let's go. Yep. I'm fucking ready. What do you got AJ? Okay, Derek. So first of all, appreciate you giving me the chance to interview you here in your home. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Get to the question. Okay, good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so first of all, I want to know about your daily routine because it's a hard line on your, you're hitting numbers throughout the day or, or time stamps throughout the day. So yeah. when did you develop the daily routine and what did you see that change in your life? Um, you know, to be honest, my, I would, I would say, um, a lot of my routine goes back, um, to when I was 17 years old and especially, really? uh, in the army, I guess I would say the army, okay. you know, um, a lot of like the way I train, whether I'm in or out of training, mm-hmm. my life is working out. I think I'm about done saying I'm done training, done competing or something like that. I fucking am what I am. It's who you I are. love this. Yeah. You know, um, like in the, so in the army, you wake up, you fucking hit your exercise, you know, or you hit, you, you do your running, you do your calisthenics and things like that. And so, or I've, I've worked out twice a day for 
fuck man, the last 16 years. Mm. So I split, I like to split my lifting Mm -hmm. and my conditioning or back before I was an amputee, it was like my lifting and my running or cardio, you know? Um, so, but I've, so I've, 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 um, really refined it over Mm -hmm. time, you know? And like now everything is very strict and exact and it's Mm -hmm. not, um, but I, I, I always try to differentiate, like maybe I have a rigid schedule, but it's something I've created for myself because that's how I feel the best. That's how I, I, and like, I feel good. I perform well. And that makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Somebody else isn't telling me to follow a schedule that I don't enjoy. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's, and that's a, that's a huge difference, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, like, um, my perfect day, I'd wake up at five in the morning. Okay. Um, I'd get to the gym. I'd get to the, I'd, and like my routine is like crazy. You know, I wake up 15 yeah. minutes. I take my pre-workout 10 minutes later. I'm at the gym. I'm pooping for 10 minutes. Then I brush my teeth. I get my stuff together from the time I leave my house. I'm working out 25 minutes later and I'll work out, um, about s- 90 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. And that's when I do like my classical training, like on yeah. DerekWhite.com, we have the white away. Yeah. Um, that's my classic training program. That's what I do in the morning. Mm-hmm. And that's, and it's not CrossFit at all, but it's great foundational training. And even in this training cycle for this competition, I've been doing it. And I asked my coach if he wanted me to stop because like the gym was closed for a while and I was just, I was just doing CrossFit type stuff twice yeah. a day. And I said, do you want me to continue doing CrossFit stuff twice a day? Or do you want me to go to LVAC? He's like, go to LVAC. Cause like what separates you as a CrossFit athlete is you enjoy that classic accessory training. Yeah. So they go, so people are like, should I, should I do bodybuilding lifting or should I do CrossFit? I was like, if you want to fucking be really, really good, do both, Yeah. you know? And so I like, I, I do that. Um, first thing in the morning, I would prefer to do CrossFit Mm -hmm. first thing in the morning and use all my energy there. But I, um, I can't because of the schedule with the boys and stuff and open gym anymore. So, so I get that done. I'm home about nine ish. Mm -hmm. I have a, at 10 20, I start making my smoothie. I try to finish that by between 10 30 and 10 45. 11.30, 11.30, I'm gearing up to go do my CrossFit. 12 o'clock, I leave. I do CrossFit from 12.30 to 2.30. I eat at 4. I <laughs> take my greens and reds at 7. I eat, start cooking again at 9 p.m. I'm laying down at 10 p.m. And I try to fall asleep between 10 and 11. And that's my fucking day. Nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> like It is broken down to a motherfucking art. It, but yeah. that's, that's, I'm telling you, man, Like the only difference between me and uh, a high paid per- professional is they have a place where they can mm-hmm. earn a living off of it or something right. like that, you know? So anyways, yeah. Yeah, totally. And so you've got your schedule so defined, but you also have based off the timeline you just ran down, you have some free time in there. So what does free time look like for you? Like what do you, cause I, it, I say free time, but mm-hmm. it's still structured knowing you right. and well, you know, so as you like August 1st, I stopped working mm-hmm. um, and it was just full, um, Mm-hmm. It was, it was just about training and resting and focusing. But outside of this, outside of this month, my free time is either working or being a dad. Yep. And so I'm, I'm basically for a dude who doesn't have a job, I work from zero five to 2200, Yeah, you know, and then I hear people. So I get fucking annoyed when people are like, Oh, I can't do this. Cause I'm busy or I can't do this because I have kids. I'm like, I'd yep. be like, I just like, a, like, a, I'm sorry. I find it hard to believe you're busier than I am. Yep. And I'm not sitting here bitching about it. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think right. it's a fucking good thing, you know? Right. And it's actually something Stacy has had to get used to um, because she sees work as work. Whereas mm-hmm. like my work is sort of my life yeah. because it's what I love. And I, I, I only do what I enjoy spending my time doing. Right. You know? And so I can do it until. Yep. So what is work for you? Programming? No, so like Art. uh social media so like mm-hmm. you know, I've been making uh my my money on social media right since twenty fifteen, but it's you know, it's like um develop yeah, new programming. Mm-hmm. We don't do custom programs, but we um we have a shit ton of different c- types of programs on DerekWhite.com. Um from CrossFit just to um like we have programs where you combine classic training and functional fitness. Those are the so fucking fit ones, the white away. Yep. So like a ton of programs and they're super cheap. Yeah. Cause so we don't do custom, we do shotgun yep. blast. And so, um, but then you know, like developing 
you know, or like dreaming up our next moves. Yeah. Like what, what video, how are we going to promote this? What, do, or what do we want to do for fun? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, like we, we like, I like to do apparel as yeah. a, as a, yeah. as a passion project. And so it's like, actually this hoodie was a sample hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good shirt. AJ. Yeah. My yeah dude, that, shirt. Fucking, that shit is nice as fuck. Isn't yes. it? 15 fucking dollars. I know. We're going to get a nice ass t-shirt like that for 15 fucking exactly. dollars. Exactly. And so like this hoodie, um, you know, we, we started sourcing our own apparel okay. for the first time and, Cause I was tired of trusting and not touching things before mm-hmm. I put them out. We want more control, you know, and then it's down the road. Like yeah. Where's where, how are we, so it's like, this business is weird because on the first of every month it resets, mm. you know, yep. that last month doesn't matter. You right. got to fucking go fishing every day. <laughs> if you want to eat, you really do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let, let, let's, let's be real this month. I haven't worked still going to make a, a, a very good livable income. Yeah. Even though shit is fucking slow as fuck. Like first form. So first yep. form is doing great. Yep. Um, all the other sales are, are about at 20% of what they usually are. Mm. But I, but that 20% is somebody out there is fucking goal. Yeah. And yeah. We, we've built it yeah. up well, you know, but it takes, it takes work. But you planned on that. You knew yeah. you were coming mm-hmm. into a dark place here to, to or going quiet so to focus on this. I gave everybody motherfucking yeah. like two, three months mm-hmm. notice. And then August 1st hits and everybody's or like, and it took like three or four days for people to be like, I don't like this. Yeah. I'm like, I fucking told you and I'm sticking to my yep. fucking guns. Yep. Okay. You know, well, cause like you said, training is who you are. Mm-hmm. So if you don't make sure you fulfilled those aspects of who you are, it'll trickle down and eventually affect what you're doing right now anyway. I've never, I've never done a training cycle where I just focused, mm. you know, and you think yeah. about, you think about like Conor McGregor yep. or what Fraser, Matt Fraser is doing right now. They go into camps yep, that's and right. they fucking shut the fuck out mm-hmm. and no distractions. And you know what was like really cool or it's been cool and it, yeah. it's been difficult. There's been pushback. It's not like, Oh, Derek, right. It's just so nice. He gets to do yeah. whatever he wants. There's always pushback. Right. Everything I do, there's pushback and that's fine because other people don't feel what I feel. Mm-hmm. They're, they're They have their goals and I have my goals, you know, there's always pushback, but, um, I'm doing this like, yeah, is this a completely selfish move? Yep. Um, I told everybody I was going to do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what, what has this training cycle been like different to the last or any other you've done? Like when you say you're all in, when you're this focused in, what's that been like for you? Um, it, it's been cool, man. It's like, it's been personal. Yeah. What have you, you know, what have you discovered about yourself when you've just really kind of gone internal with your mentality around your training and the, and the purpose of that? Yeah. Or I'll, like, I'm going to like, and I want, I was hoping we would talk about this. Cause here's, here's been mm-hmm. my big thing. August 1st, I wanted to shut down and figure out why I care. Yeah. Like, why do I care? Yeah, why, why do, do I care? Do? Cause, and you know, it's easy to read on the internet. You know, it's like, it's, um, you need to know your why people love saying you need to know your why. Do you know how fucking hard it is <laughs> to know your fucking why? <laughs> yes. Because you have to get, you have to get through 13 bullshit reasons why, like you can have a why that'll carry you through today. Yep. Um, but it's not your real why. So tomorrow you're going to have to figure out a new temporary why. And you may not but know if, it until right, you're like, Oh yeah. shit, but I'm if, not doing so what I'm it, supposed it, to be. It is. It's hard to find your why. Yeah. And and especially if there's distractions and things like that. So that's what like I really wanted to do that. And, you know, it's the classic um, tale of the the champion who loses his focus and lives a life of distractions. So for me on social media, working out, you know, if I'm if I'm training for something, but I'm also planning how I'm going to shoot this video or promote mm-hmm. something, it takes away from that training, right? you know? And, um, and that, that, that kind of distraction, like that is the exact kind of distraction that'll make a champion lose. Yeah. Like that, that's the exact story. That's what'll that's make right. a champion lose. So I, I was just, I, I really wanted to shut down and be like, why am I doing this? And, and, um, I'm pretty sure I figured it out and it's really weird. And here is, do you want to hear my progression of why? And the importance, the important, the reason I I wanted to shut down and figure out why I cared is because, and I I believe that um, when you're faced with like a real fucking challenge, if you don't know why you're there, you're going to quit. You're going to slow down or something Mm -hmm. like that. You know, you're going to, you're just going to talk your way out of something. So it's like, okay, why do I want to, why do I want to win? 
Here, imagine me at the competition. It's four and a half minutes in. Marcus is five reps ahead of me. If I'm doing it to prove to Instagram that I have what it takes to be good, that's not good enough. I'm going to fucking give yep. up and Marcus is going to beat me. If I'm doing it to make my wife proud of me, that's not enough because she is going to love me whether I win or lose. Yep. If I'm doing it for uh, my kids, that's not good enough. Right. It's because they're like, because I'd be like, oh, well, it's okay to lose. And yeah. you can lose with dignity and pride and come back and blah, blah, blah. So it was really, and you know, it's, so it's really, it's really about you. And mm -hmm. I, and I figured it out, man, it's fucking so fucking funny. 17 years old, I started working out. Okay. I started working out because I fucking hated myself because I was a fucking loser and I was a fucking loser because I was a person who didn't try. I didn't care. I didn't have any self-respect. I, I, I talked down on myself. And so there's a part of me that just thinks I suck. Yeah. There's a part of me that thinks I'm a fucking loser, that I'm worthless, that I'm no good, that I can't accomplish anything that like, that I'm just mediocre. Mm -hmm. And there's like, just fucking that there's that part of me. And so I realize over the, like I joined the military over the, and I, over the years I've only lived in defiance of that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to prove to myself that I'm not a fucking worthless piece of shit. I'm, you know, <laughs> like I've, and it's been my whole fucking life. I've just been trying to prove to myself that I'm not a worthless piece of shit. It's a fucking weird. And it's, so it's like, and that does that yeah, sound yeah. weird, but it motivates no. me. It makes mm -hmm. me feel good. She's like, you're goddamn right. I do try hard. I do want to um, be a winner. I want to yeah. be a fucking champion, but it's like that underlying. So like now four minutes into the competition, Marcus is ahead by five. I'm not a fucking loser. I'm not a fucking loser. I worked my fucking ass off. Yep. Why? Because I want to be a winner. Okay. What does a winner do? They fucking go harder. All right, here we go. Yeah. That's enough to carry me yeah. to win a fucking, you know, it's yeah, but like that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at 17, do you know what the moment was where you're, you started? Was there a moment where you recognize you wanted to shift that where you're like, Oh man, I'm, I'm fucking oh, yeah. lazy. What was it? I fucking called my mom. I was laying down in the woods crying and I told her I wanted to die. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Dang. Uh, dude, I was, um, I was really, I was, I had a, it's, it's a weird thing. I had a high school sweetheart and in mm -hmm. high school, I just, I, I quit sports Yep. I, because I couldn't handle the pressure of competition. Mm -hmm. I really couldn't. Mm -hmm. I, I wrestled in seventh and eighth grade. And then in ninth grade, I just couldn't handle the pressure of competition. I was way too scared. I was way too insecure, you know? Yep. And I didn't have anybody around to, Help you through that. Help me. Th mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I didn't have. Um, yeah. And so like, I, I'm going to fucking be there for my boys when they hit that yep. shit, you know? So what did I do? I quit. And then I fucking started smoking weed, started drinking, started mm -hmm. playing a car, started ditching school. Just a fucking loser, man. And then so because I was living like a loser, every people liked me. I was the funny guy. Right. But I, nobody respected me. There wasn't yeah. anything to respect. I only proved to them that I was a fucking loser. Yeah. And I proved to myself, I wasn't mm -hmm. happy with me. I was like, you're a fucking, I don't respect myself. How could I respect myself? Right. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't challenging, challenging myself. I wasn't pushing myself. And so, um, one night I had a, a mental breakdown and it was, it, it was just kind of building up to it, you know? Mm -hmm. And for the first time I, I told my mom, I was just like, I want to die. Like, I don't want to be alive anymore. Like this, mm -hmm. whatever this is, it hurts too much. And I was crying and she picked me up and she took me to a psychologist. We've told this story plenty of times before yeah. on the yep. podcast. And he, the psychologist said, start exercising. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started exercising. <laughs> and like, it's funny, like exercise led me to join the army. Cause I started, I started falling in love with pushing myself. Yeah. And I've said this over the years, like I seem to find meaning and purpose in life by pushing myself physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. If I'm not doing that, I'm not doing well. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. You know, as the three of us were all combat veterans. And I think that's something that isn't, that's been overlooked is encouraging, you know, look, you're struggling, go to the gym. Start there. Yeah. And then we'll build off from there. Yeah. So you've been always been open about your <clears throat> struggles with depression and so forth. Is that something you had at that, you know, early on or did that come from the military? It was, it, I, you know, I, I'm, 
It was early on. It was, it okay. was before the military. And that's why, you know, I, I try not to, I don't want people to associate my right. my mental health with simply because I got shot or right. something right. like that. That's not the case. Exactly. Like, it was, it was, it was there. And the military was like, when I was, before I got, I the military was a cure all for my fucking shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really was. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do a career. Uh, but then what happened happened and it was sort of, it was, I mean, that's a traumatic experience and, right. and, um, and I struggled for a while, but yep. it wasn't, um, uh, but like my life is great now and I still mm -hmm. have, I still have suicidal thoughts and I go through bouts of depression and mm -hmm. things like that, but you won't, you'll never, you'll probably won't notice now unless I tell you straight up right? because I've been doing this my whole fucking life right? and I know myself. Yeah. And I, and I wreck. And so people are like, Oh, I can't do this. Cause I'm depressed. I'm like, Sh what the, f no, that's bullshit, man. Cause I'm fucking depressed <laughs> yeah. right now. And, my, and half you, like everybody that fucking thinks they know me, they don't know fucking shit yep. about what has been going on around here for the last two years. Yeah. All right. Like, yeah, you know, right, right. um, so it just, yeah, it's, um, I, I was actually, it's funny cause I was talking to a guy in the gym this morning, a, a guy that I like, and he, you know, we've, uh, been acquaintances for a while and uh he was saying how you doing and i was talking openly about feeling like a little mm -hmm. anxious nervous or i told him he said he said competition week right and i said yeah he said how you doing i was like i'm walking that fine line between confidence and arrogance yeah you know because like i try to keep myself in check yep whilst um having an aggressive mentality that I'm going to fucking attack and win. Right. You know? And I told him, I was like, it's weird because I've only had confidence since I've only learned confidence since my boys were born. I like my, I spent my whole life just sad. And he mm. was like, you it's like, what? No, not you, not you. It was like, and he was seriously, he was like, what could you possibly yeah. know about depression? What could you know about this and that? And I was like, now this is a fucking uncomfortable conversation. Right? <laughs> yeah. Cause it just I got weird. No, a fuck ton. Yeah. All right. And just because, and like when I'm in my gym, I'm in, I'm, when I'm in the gym, I'm in my element. Yep. Don't judge me. Right. Based on how fucking I am in the gym. Yeah. Cause that's my yard time. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You're out yeah. of jail. Yeah. Okay. So you, you discovered your why. What does that feel like? What kind of focus does that give you now moving forward? Like the competition's over on Saturday, right? And then there'll be another one in the future and that kind of thing. But what does that do for the bigger scope of your life? Knowing like, this is my purpose. How is there been any things that shifted for you in this last month that have either become more clear or that you've decided you're going to put aside because they weren't anything like that come up for you? I, um, well, I think I, uh, question like um how do i feel i feel like I, f I feel fucking i feel dangerous yeah i feel dangerous i'm like who the fuck and, and and um i'm not saying i'm the best in the world or something like that mm -hmm. you know i'm just i just know that um if your goal is to beat me yeah and i i know how much i'm suffering right now the last right. 15 weeks i know how hard the last 15 weeks have been you better, you, I mean, if so if you want to beat me, you have to suffer more than that. Yeah. And that's a lot of fucking <laughs> suffering, dude. And so like, and, it, and yeah. it's a good suffering. It's not right. like a boohoo crybaby right. suffering, but it's like, you know, do you think I don't get fucking flack around? It's tough from like training, lifestyle, mm -hmm. work. You're it, like tr being in a training cycle is a stressor on your marriage. Can yeah. you fucking handle that? Yeah. You know, and it's not, it's not a unique thing for, for my marriage or something. Right. Um, but dude, I've really like stuck to my guns. Actually, I did something super fucking nerdy. <laughs> I got new shoes for this training cycle and you know how you can customize Metcons yeah. on the, on the tongues of my Metcons. Um, it says stay true. Nice. And like, that's a stupid saying, you know, or it's something that like, uh, a straight edge person would say, you know, <laughs> like, but, uh, like nothing against straight edge people, yeah. but they love getting stay true tatted on their knuckles, yeah. you know, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but dude, like in the past or this, I've, I can really honestly say that I've done as well as a human can expect themselves to do this training cycle. Awesome. Like in the past, you know, sometimes you'll lie to your coach about your time. Mm -hmm. You'll shave a rep here or mm -hmm. there. Oh, you got to do 20 wall balls, 17. Good enough. You got to do 21 pull-ups, 18. Good enough. Things like that. You know, you just, you just yeah. take little shortcuts sometimes. 
and I haven't taken one single fucking shortcut. I've had to miss some training sessions. Um, you know, I got COVID yeah. there. Yep. Um, and I, but like this, this, this cycle, I've been completely honest with my coach every mm-hmm. step of the way. And we've, and it's been annoying for him because he's adjusting my programming yeah. like every two days. <laughs> and I'll be like, hey man, this week I'm going to LVAC in Apollo and he'll write the whole program. I'm like, hey man, uh, you know what I say to him? I just text him. I say, Omaha, Omaha, like Pey- Peyton Manning, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I just say Omaha and he oh, writes man. back, God damn it. That's yeah. so and funny. I was like, hey, remember I said I'm going to LVAC? Well, I'm going to my garage. And so he writes a week of training for my garage. And then on Wednesday, I'm like, Hey man, I'm going to LVAC the rest of the week, oh, you know, man. but I'm staying fucking, yeah. I want to do everything on paper. Yeah. And, and if there's, if it's like, Hey man, I'm fucking, I, I can't, I can't do this. Cause he, and here's, here's why this hurts. Mm-hmm. What can we do instead to get some good work in today? And I've just like, if I've, I feel I'm just, you know, proud of myself, man. Yeah. Like have that kind of integrity. Cause I'm a shysty motherfucker. Yeah. I really am to outwardly and inwardly. Yeah. And we're like, everybody is. Yeah. Our natural yeah. tendencies mm-hmm. aren't the elevated. Yeah. So I just, be. yeah, I it's, and this is the first time. Yeah. But it's like the natural progression of things. I think that's a, that's a, <sighs> when you put the work if, in. Yeah. If there's a, if there's something that separates me from the people who follow me, mm-hmm. it or that, that they're struggling and they've just lost their way mm-hmm. for like five, six years. I've never stopped trying. Yeah. I'm not getting shit right. I've just never stopped trying and not like I'm really getting to a good level in my mental game. Right. And, and like, and you know what? Like as far as this competition and stuff goes, like it's easy to go to the gym and I, like, and all these people yeah. that are calling me out, I'm gonna beat yeah. you, Derek, blah, blah, blah. They post that all they do is post their workouts. I'm like, that is like the least possible thing I give a fuck about. Yeah. What are you doing the the other 22 hours of the day? Right. Cause you like, I need to know what you're doing. If I'm going to fear you, I need to know how you're spending the other 22 hours of the day. Cause I bet you're not doing what I'm doing. Yeah. I, I bet you're not, you yeah. know, <laughs> and if you want to beat me, you have to. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I worked in the self-development world and had a few clients where it was primarily mental, emotional work. And they, you know, frequently they'd come back and be like, I'm struggling. And I'd be like, go through the checklist. Are you doing the things that we've already talked? There's no magic. Mm -hmm. There's no magic. The the formula is do what you're supposed to Mm -hmm. period, especially on the days you don't want to. Yeah. Right. It's just accountability, self accountability. So, all right. So I want to know about the shift once you had your boys, because Uh, there's been a Derek White, a shift. Sure. Since having your boys, right? You, well, you, only a piece of shit doesn't change after having kids. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So nat, 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 <laughs> naturally, but what, um, you know, what was that, what, what was that moment like? So you've got, you know, cause you've lived, um, when you first came to the Rush Club stage, it was like, there was the Derek White that drank and partied all the time. At least that was the perception. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was a, yeah. And then you evolve. Mm-hmm. You met Stacy. And there was an evolution there. Mm-hmm. Then you guys had your twins and there was a big evolution there. Yeah. Well, I mean, my first rush club, I was, um, 29. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 30, I'm, I'm yeah. 35 here this year. AJ. No, yeah, totally. um, you know, uh, what's funny is, uh, even, even, even back then and, and like the weight loss video, Oh, this guy, yeah. all he does is drink beer and not give a <laughs> fuck. I have always lived, uh, uh, or at least I've, I've struggled hard to find discipline. You know, um, it's hard to do in your twenties. It's yeah. hard to have, it's hard to have discipline in your twenties yeah, because sure. you're so fucking emotional. Mm-hmm. You got no fucking money. You don't know what you're going to do with your life. Cause you don't know who the fuck you are yet, yep. but you're listening to people like me and Jocko and other people like have discipline and you know, <laughs> it's hard, man. Yeah. And like I wrote, uh, in my food philosophy, um, the, the, the nutrition, I wrote a nutrition type ebook. It's on derekwhite.com. And I sort of talk about the evolution of that. It's like you're my, and, and it's almost like my evolution to finding discipline. And I'll tell you, becoming, becoming a dad, it, um, it makes that easier. Mm. It makes being a good person easier. Cause you really, you're like, um, I've always liked being, I liked being a leader in the army and being, yeah. being in a leadership role pushed me. Mm-hmm. It, it motivated me. It made me want to do better, mm-hmm. you know? Cause like, and, and that was, that's how I was as like a team leader. If I'm going to make this person do something, I need to be better than them at it. You know, yeah, like, right. so, um, and so it's, it's like everything I do, it's, um, 
what message do I want to give my boys? Mm -hmm. Or if, or if they're in this situation, how would I tell them to respond? And that's fucking hard sometimes Mm -hmm. like, um, to, to respond the right way. But that's what life is, is like, you know, um, it's easy to be a good person when times are good. Yeah. How, How do you act when times are tough? Right. You know? And, um, it's just, uh, and like the biggest thing I, the, the biggest shift for me has been in confidence. Mm-hmm. They've just like really, I stopped caring about hating myself. Mm. I just stopped caring mm. because I think that, um, or maybe a big thing is, is I don't want them to be depressed and things yeah. like that. I don't want them to have that. And that's not, a, that's not completely within my control, right? but I can do, you know, like I think there's some things I was missing growing up. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I didn't mm-hmm. have somebody there giving me the mentorship. Good, good advice. Right. Yeah. Like, right. I, like I didn't have a, like a mentor, a guide mm-hmm. or a hero, uh, a, a, a male figure telling me how to fucking navigate this fucking world. Right. You know? And so it's like, um, if, if I want them to be something first, first I have to be it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just, uh, it's funny. I, I, uh, Ross Patterson, who's on uh, drinking bros, Maine. Yeah. Yep. He's, I've done some interviews with him before and I did an interview with him years ago after, after I beat Marcus the first time I, I drank for four months and wrote music mm-hmm. and I really dove into like that depressed suicidal part of me. This was before the kids, you know? And he said, he said, once you have kids, there's just, there's no, time for that at all. Yeah. And in my head, I was thinking, I was like, who the fuck are you to say that? <laughs> like, who are you to say that? That shit's not, Yep. you know, like maybe the, it will be, you yep. know, like mm. it's I've, but, but then I had kids and I was like, there is no fucking time for that. <laughs> There's no fucking was right. time for that shit. Yeah. He yeah, was right. But you know, but, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't push back when he said that. Right. I, th- I, in, inside I was like, no, but I, like some, Ross is the type of person where if he says something, I consider it. Mm. And it's and when you hear yep. new things, it's hard to change on the spot, you yep. know? <laughs> well, yeah, but you could have gone the other way because yeah. the way you were raised, that wasn't the case for him. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it still yeah. had to be self-awareness. And the, the I, I would be surprised if it wasn't the routines you committed to yourself early on. Yeah even though they weren't very clear in that particular area of your life, that, yeah. that landed itself to help you develop yeah. that. Well, I'll tell you, like... With the kid, I try to, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure my dad, I'm, I'm, my dad was a de- depressed guy. Yep. Um, and he just didn't handle it the same way. I mm-hmm. am still to this day. I still, that I still struggle with that or not struggle. Like I deal with that shit every day, but I defy it. I, and, and my dad's, he's not, a, he, he died five years ago mm-hmm. just recently. Um, Cause he just really just gave up. And like, sometimes when I hit, I mean, having twins is tough. It's tough. It's a tough life change. It's tough on your marriage. And um, uh, it's hard to, sometimes I get, sometimes I really get sad that um, my dad's not here to talk to, but Mm -hmm. then I get more sad because even if he was here, I wouldn't talk to him. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. I don't want my boys to cry because I'm that right okay <laughs> you know? so, yeah. Yep. yeah so that's um yeah that's good and like, like like you know i i don't hate my dad he was just he, like life is tough man life is hard right you know? yeah. so yeah 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 that's so and, and to sum that up having kids it's a great reason to fucking get your ass up and live right yeah you know? yeah totally yeah uh so you mentioned with your training how much involvement do you have with your programming because it sounds like you have quite a bit but is it is he I mean, I've seen the way you perform and this guy's been your coach for a long time, mm-hmm. right? So what's the, the the dynamic there between you and him in terms of what the programming looks like and the frequency and the intensity and so forth? Um, yeah, like the cool thing is, and and my coach has to remain nameless. Yep. Um, but um, the cool thing is, is we've been working together for six years now and he knows me. This is, so this, this training cycle is the first time I've completely, where he's taken over a hundred percent of my training. Cause in the past he'll write my CrossFit programming, but I'll write my classic training programming. Okay. You know, but then, so the problem is, is he doesn't know what I'm doing in the morning oh, and yeah. that leads to overtraining and injuries and things like that. Yep. And so this is our first time where he does my AM session 
and my PM session. And he's good on my CrossFit training. Mm -hmm. We differ a little bit on the morning training. So the thing is, is like every, every Saturday or Sunday, we, we write one week at a time and we've done, dude, we've done a really good job in our phase building for this yeah. program. It's, it's like really cool what we've done. Um, uh, we have a little powwow Saturday or Sunday on FaceTime. Then he writes the programming and then I just give honest feedback throughout nice. the week. And he's the shit because he's got a busy ass motherfucking full-time job, <laughs> but he's there to adjust things yeah. and, and stuff like that. But we know each other. Yeah. And so sometimes I'll text him in a workout cause I want to make a change and he doesn't reply, but I'll know what he expects of me and I'll do that, you know, and take yeah. the hard, the hard modification, the hardest modification. But yeah, this is the first time I've let somebody completely um, and it's, and it's difficult yeah. because it's like, I'm submitting, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's making the plan yeah. and his, 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 he's making the plan to win. Yep. Um, and, and I'll just, I'll just say this, the, um, this is the same guy that writes programs with me that are on Derek yep. com. all of our programs, mm. same fucking team. And this is, we've, Ed, man, we've, we're, that, and that's another thing you want to beat me. You're not just competing against me, right? You're competing against me and my team, your team. And then people would be like, Oh, Derek white is lucky. Cause he has a team. It's like, you think I just like fucking God took a shit yeah. and like pooped out <laughs> Let like, there be a this, team. these, these yeah. people around me. No motherfucker. You worked for it. I, I brought this, like we've, we've built this yep. ourselves yep. from nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So instead of like telling me how fucking lucky I am that I have this, that, and this, the other, yeah. I started from zero, like everybody else. Yeah. God damn it. Well, that's just <laughs> going to be the difference between why you're, why you're at that level and others aren't Yeah. is mm -hmm. you're working for it and they might discover they, they, yeah. they won't and they'll stay where they're at. And, and maybe they are working, but, and maybe they're just, um, a little bit behind. Right. I wasn't this good right. five, six years ago. Right. So like being nice there and stuff, but like, yeah, you start calling me out on the internet. Then yeah. You're just going to get told to go fuck yourself yeah. real fast. Exactly. Not on the internet, but here on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. I'm not going to argue with you on Instagram. I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself <laughs> yeah. on Savage Saturdays. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> I hate that. Uh, like what we're talking about is I hate that shit, man. Yeah. People love to tell me to, that they're coming they're for coming me. For you. They, people have been coming for me. Uh, you know, like for, I should start making like, I think that's uh, like the guy a, I was a, telling you about a masturbation earlier. joke when they're like, I'm coming for you. I'm like, what picture you got? <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, what picture did you find that, you know, but no, it, everybody, awesome. people, people love to say, it's a good thing and a bad thing, man. You know what? You want to hear a cool thing that happened? Yeah. It was like a month ago. Um, I think this was before you, were you at, um, at one time when I was training at old filthy power. So this must've been before you old filthy power uh, and above knee amputee, a local guy joined me in um, my training session, mm -hmm. you know? And he was like, Oh yeah. I, you know, like Paralympian I train, I can fucking handle this shit. Let's go. And he shows up and he's a super nice dude and he's, yeah. you know, he, he can get after a little bit, but um, it's a deadlift day and he's trying to keep up with me. And we're like, don't, don't, don't break yourself. Don't. Yeah. And he's, and he's, and he's trying, you know, and he's, I think the deadlifts that day were like 365 and I was ripping them, but yeah. I have good clean technique and yep. he was pulling them. He was getting it off the ground, but it looked like fucking oh, ass and man. it was just ate yeah. the fuck up and it was like, knock it off. And finally we told him, you know, I was like, Hey man, I didn't just jump into 365, yeah. right? Like nine years ago, I started deadlifting yeah. with uh, orange dumbbells and things like that, you know? Yeah. It's if super if cool you're an dude, Iron Man, I'm not going to jump right? in and do an Iron Man yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so I, you know, he, he joined me in a workout that day and I haven't seen him since, but I bumped into him at the gym recently. And I can't remember, like we were just shooting the shit a little bit and I said something. And, and just out of the blue, he was like, oh, come on, man. He's like, you're the AK, all the other AKs want to be. Mm. He just said that. And I was like, yeah, I think that's true. And I think that's a good, I think, I think that's true. I think that's a good thing. It's not like me fucking sucking my own dick here that's or something right. like that. But it's <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, for competition, I just, I seem to be leading the pack. And that's yeah. a great thing. Yeah. Cause like, yeah. bec and like, um, you know, I kind of, proved to myself yep. by proving to myself that I can do lunges. I proved to the other AKs that we can do lunges yeah. by proving to myself that I can squat heavy without a box. It kind of showed some like other guys have been doing that, yep. you know, like and it's just sort of, and, and it's like, Oh, but I do things on bit. Sometimes they right. mean we want Derek's follower count and blah, mm. blah, blah or something. But anyways, I was, he was like, I was like, I'm in a, it was just weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of what Sean was saying when he was on the podcast about 
me inspiring people, but not thinking I'm an inspiration and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You know, it's just a weird fucking, I'm only living for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm really living. Well, there's integrity in that. That 17 yeah. year old you talked about that discovered that he wasn't the guy he wanted to be starts yeah. putting routines together, lives by those routines, regardless of, you know, the following. Yeah. But he's like, this isn't for your why this isn't for anybody else. This is for me. So now the integrity is starting to become in alignment with what people are seeing. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that yeah. because if people know that about you and they start seeing that inside of you, what you can now share with them is because you got fucking routines. I do what I say I'm going to do every single day. Yeah. And there's, you know, that integrity backed by that solid desire yeah. of knowing who you are is what puts you where you're at. So now you're starting to live the life that that 17 year old started. That's actually, yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, I, yeah, I've, I wanted to be, if I'm thinking about it, it's like, what do, what do you want when you start yeah. your journey? You want to be disciplined. You mm-hmm. want to work hard. You want to, you want to be one of the best, if right. not the best among your peers. Yep. It only has taken me 17 years, <laughs> but, uh, you know, no, no, that's that for real, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah, that's, that's actually really true. I never considered that I, I sort of have become, mm-hmm. or I think I have maybe thought about that this month or, you know, I, I used to, my self-talk game has become a lot better and yeah. to like a nerdy point, dude. Yeah. If I'm like in the gym and I hit a lift, I ought, I say out loud, good job, Derek. Yeah. You know, dude. but you know, it's like, nice. good job, Derek. But it's like, it's, it changes you, it man. It does. It makes you feel good and it, yep. and it, and it brings you, it, it brings you into what you're doing. Yep. And it's like, dude, good job. Good job. Or like, you know, I don't be like, sometimes yep. I'm dragging ass. It's like, get up Derek, get moving. Yep. You know, but I, so it's. Yeah. The subconscious is always listening. So as you start yeah. speaking those words to it, I mean, yeah. I'm looking at your book collection here and you're, you're well read. You study philosophy and so forth. And it's funny because people who follow you just on the podcast, <laughs> they have no idea, but this, you're just, this is one yeah. aspect of who yeah. you are. I mean, I look at the artwork you do, the music you have, the intensity you have in your training, then the intensity you have towards your family. I mean, there's, there's a well-rounded person that you've developed over 17 years. Now, as you start to dial in, even when this is over, dial in the awareness of where you've come from, then it's like, you you now know who you are. Yeah. Right. It's like, that's what, it, it's that's no what, longer, I'm the 17 year old. No, yeah. it's, I'm Derek Wida. I'm 35 years old and this is who I am and what I'm capable of. Yeah. And that, you know, I, I'm glad I shut down this month and figured that out because I think that's, that's the, uh, that's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Like with, like when we, that's what so many people want. That's what I wanted. Figure like, why are you doing, why are you doing what you're doing? Right. Why do you care? And it, and if you figure that out, it really like intensifies and then it's, it's just sort of like, dude, it's, it's like, it's like when you're trying to figure it out, you're dating. Mm-hmm. Dating sucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's cool. All right. You know, yeah. but it's like, there's, there's, there's no security. There's yeah. no, and then you get, then you get, and then you get married. You married a few years. You have kids, you got a house. Your relationship isn't something you think about or right. like, you're not scared. Like you yeah. put time and effort into it, but you're not scared. Right. Like, you know what it is. Yes. Um, you know, and that's what this is like. I think if all of a sudden you don't have to worry about that anymore. Mm-hmm. And when you're having, when you're having trouble, when you hit a hard point, you're like, Oh, yep. This is why I'm doing it. Yep. And then like, that's, or it's just a cool thing. And I, maybe I'm wrong. No, I, nope, but I, but like every fucking, every time I've dragged an ass now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, you're aware of what's yeah. where the integrity is lacking, and you yeah. just go right to and it. You, like so, hey, here's here's my advice for listeners: watch Rocky <laughs> yeah. a lot, a lot. I, and, and like, I've been you, seeing that on your you know, I, it was it was weird because like I had so like last week was Rocky week. Part of my routine, like so, one of the things. So back before August, I would work out, work, we'd bang out like a podcast here or something yeah. or do some other work or something. And then I'd go work out again and I'm tired or something like that. But August I work out, I lay in bed in a dark room and watch a motivational movie, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So last week was Rocky and it was, it was fun to watch. I do it every time I care about something, you know, Rocky's like, your go-to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was, I never picked up on that before because so, or before I, before last week, that's, I figured out that why shit, you know? Yep. And then I watched Rocky one and I was like, 
Dude, I was like getting <laughs> chills, <laughs> getting chills and fucking crying. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> yes. You know, like, fucking Rocky, man. You know, but it's, it is like the old, the parts that I used to think were boring as fuck and I would fast forward through. That's where the meat on the bone is, man. Yeah. That was, that, that I was like, get the fuck out of here. Why the fuck didn't I pay attention to this shit 15 goddamn years ago? Yeah. Sometimes you're not ready to learn something. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, totally. oh, and actually yeah. it's your ego. Like we yeah. don't want to fucking see this right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Like, Cause then it's going to highlight yeah. the bullshit I'm mm-hmm. not doing yet. Yeah. And so now that you're in, in alignment with all that, it's mm-hmm. like, you're ready to soak it in. Yeah. Do you believe in um, like manifesting or seeing your future or do you let it come as it shows up and just focus on the moment? So um, if I was to ask you, what do you, where do you see Derek White at 10 years from now? I think that's a stupid question because if you would have asked me in 2010 where I saw myself in 10 years, I would have told you fucking dead dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I, you're like, no, yeah, I, yeah. I, no, that's I don't believe I in that. I don't believe in that stuff, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not lazy about my right. life or my future. You know, um, I'm, so, I'm flexible. Yeah. I'm more flexible than that. And I, or, or when I was in the army, I had a fucking plan. Yeah. All right. And yeah. I learned what right. life does to your plans, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but, uh, but, but I, I'm, I'm big on visualization. Yeah. Okay. I visu- yeah. So tell uh, me about that. Um, what does that look like for you? So you've got this competition coming up. How would you incorporate visual visualization for what's happening on Saturday? So like it, it, it's, so I think, um, whether you do it consciously or mm-hmm. unconsciously, you're going to visualize. If you're a competitive athlete, you when you lay down at night, you're doing your event, you're doing your workout, and you can either let it cause you anxiety and sleeplessness, yep. or you can I've I like I accept that, and it doesn't and like it doesn't excite me in an anxious way. You know, like I do have to, mm-hmm. you know, I'll let myself tense up for five minutes. And then I'll do some belly breaths or something yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm really, and I consider that part of my training, man. Mm-hmm. I really do. Or I'll like, when I take a, a salt bath, um, when I can, I, uh, I would really prefer to read or listen to a podcast, but I turn on like, like native American mm-hmm. spiritual music yep. and I sit there and visualize the competition awesome. from, my, from my fucking walkout till, you know, like, Oh shit fucking yep. all right Derek you just got off the D ball Hayward is three reps ahead of you on the box jump overs how do you react because yeah. you're not used to seeing someone ahead of you what if it's a fucking race at the last 10 how are you going to react mentally yeah and so it's just like oh I'm gonna stay fucking calm the whole yeah so I, but like that's the thing I visualize that you know yep. in a hundred million different ways and I consider that part of my training yeah I really do oh, you yeah, know? absolutely and um and it's and it's um it's a dangerous thing because you can really let it in the past. It was crippling. Yeah. It made me do worse. It put, I, I, I let it put too much pressure on myself. I come out, go too hard out of the gate. I'll tell you, I fucking, we did this workout in 2017 and mm-hmm. I didn't finish injury mm-hmm. or no injury. And, and I was ahead and I maybe slowed down, but you can see my face in those videos. I was, I was gassed, yep. man. You know, I did the workout about a month and a half ago. <laughs> You're talking about the workout that's going to happen yeah. in the competition, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. I, 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 I did, the, I did our competition workout in early July. Yeah, I don't anticipate doing as well as I did then, like because I'm, you know, still recovering from COVID a little right. bit. I'm, I'm well enough to compete. No excuses. If I lose, I don't get mm-hmm. to say, oh, it's because yeah, I was right. sick. Yeah. I would, if I, if you know, but um, I, my goals have changed a little bit. Yeah, you know? so, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked a little bit about that. Yeah, but yeah, visualizing cool. is um. And that's, and, and, I, and so like 10, I'm not thinking about 10 years from now. I'm not, I'm yeah. not even thinking about September 1st yet. Yeah. I've, and I've, t- I've been having to remind people here, not too much, you know, but mm-hmm. it's like, you're like, Hey, well, what about this? Like, Nope. Mm-hmm. After rush club. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about one motherfucking thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, a lot of what you're saying is like Saturday's a competition for me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I'm visualizing it. Yeah. I'm like, if those nervous feelings come in, I just, I'm just with them. Mm-hmm. I'm questioning them. Why is it there? Sometimes it shows up. Okay. I'm missing. There's a piece that's missing. So go take action on that. Yeah. But yeah, 
you know, on this side, yeah. Saturday's as big as a competition yeah. for me as it is and for you and guys. It's, and yep. it's your, your, your comeback. Yep. Um, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's yep. cool. I, I absolutely get that. And I, and yeah. I can appreciate it. I would really like to care about you and the event more, <laughs> but, um, I'm really just like having a meme this is your event this month, yep. AJ. <laughs> <laughs> this is your event, man. Yeah. I'd love to give a shit about you, man, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm currently, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, look, uh, if you show up in that yeah. space, then you are giving a shit about me. Well, that's what I'm I want. I'm excited to, to talk to you about this stuff more yeah. on September 1st. Yeah, let's do that. But until then, I got fucking, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I, I certainly get the power of being able to visualize what that's going to look like for you. And I think it prepares you. Because mm -hmm. then once you're in that moment, like mm -hmm. you said, it's like, oh, I've been here. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you've been there. St Stacy and I, we talked about it on the podcast um, before one time because she listened to an episode of the, there's a podcast called The Happiness Lab. Okay. And it was like Michael Phelps coach used to oh, yeah. make him visualize his um, shit, you know? Yeah. And then, and then one time he was swimming and his fucking goggles filled with water. So he couldn't see, but I don't know if he wasn't aware that you can open your eyes underwater, or not, you know? <laughs> yeah. but apparently he was blinded uh, because his goggles <laughs> malfunctioned. Um, I've swam under, you know? I didn't think about that till now. Like the yeah. story goes, his goggles filled with water. So he was blind. He all, everything was black. I was like, I've never thought about that. Why didn't he just open his fucking eyes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, cause he had visualized and he knew how many yeah. strokes it takes and things like that. So nice. do this, this competition will be weird because, um, our plan is, um, smarter mm. than it's ever been and seeing it written on paper. Mm -hmm. Like you want me to pause here? Oh man. Are you sure? Yeah. It's like there's a lot of people watching me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, but it's like, um, yeah. Um, I've been watching funny, people but like we like visualize mm -hmm. and it's like, I've been visualizing, visualizing, taking that tactical yep. time out. You know, I've been watching people do this format of competition since it was started. And that right there is the key mm -hmm. because you guys know the workout. It's like, I tell people, it's like if, if I was fighting MMA and I know yeah. my fighter, I'm watching every bit of fight footage. Yeah. The workout's your fighter. Yeah. So you got to know where the pause is or where you're going Yeah. because the intensity of the environment is mm -hmm. going to add another element. Yeah. And if you didn't know exactly how you're performing when you show up, yeah. that makes the difference in yeah. win or lose. Mm -hmm. I know. So it feels weird. So actually, um, uh, dude, I, I had an idea the other day. Like, so what I, what, one of the things I like about CFC, like the yep. platform is there's one workout per division. Yep. But do you, do you th what if there was like three workouts that everybody knew and then it was a random drawing yeah. every time or something like that? Yep. Some, some added level of excitement. Or like for me, if, if I, I don't, I don't, I'm not questioning it, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I understand. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it just, I don't want to train for the same workout over and over again. And then if, what if, if it's yep. like, what if it was like, there's three workouts and everybody knows the three workouts mm -hmm. and we do our walkouts and that's when you fucking pick the ball and it says, Hey, you're, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing face fucker 2.0. Yep. And then it's like, go. Yeah. And then you just, so you have to like, that would make it. That was exactly where we're going. Really good. Yep. Cause I need so, more fucking variety. Or, yeah. I, I just, never thought yeah. about the random drawing of the ball there, but just it was live. three yeah. workouts because yeah. I, we don't want the audience to get bored of seeing the right. same shit yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you knew there was three yeah. and everybody at home was training mm -hmm. for that particular division, it's one of these three. Yeah. It keeps it fresh and exciting, but it's also like, if I see you two, three times a year. And then it's like, dun, 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 yeah. devil ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the lightning bonus round. Yeah. 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 Dang, dude. Two minutes off the clock. Yeah. yeah. No. Totally. Yeah. But, we, I am going into the space of those three and I do like the idea of, cause then, know, like in, in, in three years, like, cause it, it, it'll become a specialty thing. That's right. And that's, and that takes away from the overall fitness test. Yes. And so if there's like three, so like our workout Saturday is awesome. Cause it mm -hmm. tests strength, speed, agility, endurance. Yep. All within a short window. Yeah. It's a nasty fucking workout. Have you ever done it? Yeah. Did you, I tried did, it after you did guys did, you, did the you finish first time. the time cap? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I even tried to like, yeah. I'm going to try with one leg. So yeah. I kind of kept my leg behind me. Yeah. I was like, I got like a quarter of the way through. Yeah. I, like, I need both my legs. I need yeah. both legs. <laughs> no. So I, I, um, uh, yeah, that's cool. I, I made the time cap. Nice. In July though. So I'll, July. I'll, yeah. So our, here's a, here's By a, a lot or a little, a lot, By a lot. Yeah, okay. We did really good. Um, nice. and, uh, 
our goal. So here's, here's something about that I've had to deal with as a, like, so I fucking, sh- my hope, like my whole life plan is to shut down August 1st. Yep. Guess what happens on August 1st? That's when I got COVID, COVID. dude. That's like that. I got hit with that shit, you know? And I'll, and it was like, it's like sort of panic mode, right? Yep. Um, yeah. I was curious about the mentality there. Yeah. So, so our goal so initially our goal was to, it wasn't me versus Marcus. It was me versus the clock. Right. And we wanted to just like, just do fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Just like, I, it was like, and this isn't any disrespect to Marcus. I, you know, this is, yeah. but this is me this is not you. and yep. my personal selfish goal here. Um, it was me versus the clock and I didn't want to win. I wanted every, I wanted to, I wanted me and Jake to be like, what the fuck was that? Do you like, right, how yeah. the fuck did we get, how the fuck did that happen? Yeah, you right, know, yep. I don't care about anybody else, but it was yeah. like me. I was, I was like, dude, I just want to laugh yeah. at how fucking fast we were. Yeah. Um, but then, then I got, um, this fucking, the, the illness, you know, and it was like, all right, well, you know, Maybe now, but like, what do I got to do to win? Mm-hmm. Beat Marcus by one rep. Yep, that's right. And so, like, I'll try, I'll do my best, but like, maybe it's not my standards had to lower or get they, they had to. They like, had to my change. body changed, mm-hmm. and so yeah. my standards had to change. And so maybe it's like, you know, get over that ego part of you, and just like, if I can get three to five reps out ahead of Marcus and stay there. Yeah. And if I don't finish under the time cap in front of the audience or for the show, Mm -hmm. so what if I secure a win and am healthy when it's over? Yep. You know? Yep. You know, yeah. ultimately the titles presented the person who gets the one rep ahead, like one rep. Yeah. And so it's like, and, and, and so it's like, it's, I got to not care Mm -hmm. because you know, the other, the other AKs at home, they're going to be watching like, Mm -hmm. Oh, Derek didn't make the fucking time cap. Like, like they don't matter. That's exactly right. Right. Fuck them. Fuck that. All I got to, Oh, there's, there's, there's only one thing I have to do to win. Yeah. Win by one rep. Yep. That's it. Yes. <laughs> like one rep or so, one second. Yeah. Yours, so if, yep. I, if I, and if I'm feeling good that night and I want to fucking, and I want to go for it and you know, make that time cap. All right, cool. Yeah. But if I don't, yeah, good, man. Good. Just yeah. Fucking. That's the strategy that I want everybody to bring to it yeah. to know exactly how they're going to perform. So all of the, all the other noise is gone. Yeah. Like you're just in the zone for that. Well, if time. you like the, the cool thing about CFC, you got to do CFC to get, you got to get one. I mean, I've competed on team events or Mm -hmm. like bigger, bigger events when Mm -hmm. there's like 10 lanes, when it's just you and another (laughs) motherfucker with a crowd around you and the fucking kind of hype that comes with CFC, it is a different fucking, that's why I was fucking diarrhea (laughs) and puking at the same time. Cause there's enough outside stimulus Uh where you can't have more stimulus. You know, and so, yeah. We've had games athletes on, and they said this was way more intense than the yeah. games because they can blend crazy. into 10 other athletes yeah. on the field. And that, and I love that. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, at, you know, like at the games, it's four days, yep. and you can jockey. It's like, oh, I don't have to win this event. Yep. I just have to beat this person mm-hmm. and let some people come in between us. It's like, hey, um, not yep. over here. Yeah. Over here is one on one, one event, everybody watching you. Yep. It's all on the line yeah, for one. It's fucking cool. It's cool, yeah, man. I, good. Fucking I appreciate love it. that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was all by design. The, the music, yeah. the lighting, the walkout, it's yeah. all designed to stimulate as many senses of the human body for both yeah. athlete and spectator that you could find anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, how good is my walkout song? Dude. My buddy, my buddy Scotty and I made I haven't the, heard oh, it. Oh, you haven't heard it? Oh, no, I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's 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 really good. Yeah. Yeah. So um I I you know I we gotta get back uh yeah. to the gym here. We can wrap yep. up here, but w- cool. uh people can watch. Yes. Yeah, so it's professionally broadcast. Yeah. You'll be able to stream it from our Facebook page, mm-hmm. Competitive Fitness Championship. Right. If you uh, want to get an alert to be reminded, you can go to our website, thecfclive.com. The CFC yep. Live. The CFC Live.com. Okay. And you can sign up for the the list to get notified when we go live or just go to our Facebook page. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, There are limited tickets available if you are in the area. You know, we're in St. George, Utah. I need some tickets. Okay. Yeah, I forgot. I'll make sure you get some. Okay. Yep. So uh, it's going to be limited seating. Uh, Obviously, with COVID going on, we're being as respectful for that as possible. We're basically following local laws where we're at. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, And... But if you're at home <laughs> and we're doing it in Utah, cause them local laws are pretty good. Yes, they, they, got, they got the good laws <laughs> yeah. right now. Co- COVID what? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you yeah. mean the flu? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Right. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah, but if you're watching at home, 
you know, look, we've got a professional broadcast company. They do the Arizona, uh, the Arizona Rattlers. Yeah, so this I mean, is it's, like multi-camera switching yeah, back and yeah. forth. Good quality. Six ship. cameras, it's play by so play, fucking, color commentary. Good energy. Mm-hmm. Like you don't yep. got to watch because you give a fuck. Like, yeah. In me or without me, yeah. this is a fun thing to watch. It's going to be a great it's, show. It's, yeah. Yeah. Like yep. I said, this is, this yeah. is my competition and too. These aren't, these aren't yeah. shit. These aren't just, these aren't shit athletes. No. These are, right. these are. These yep. are the best people in your gym. That's right. And they're going head to head and someone's going to fucking lose. Yeah. Somebody, like somebody, <laughs> somebody, somebody who's really, really, really fucking good yep. is going to get their fucking ass kicked. Yeah. Cause that's how, that's right. just what it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. It, we've got a, we've got an awesome production, a really cool environment. And you know, right now with everything that's been going on, our goal is to really get people excited to get moving again. If you haven't yeah. been, if you haven't taken advantage yeah. of the opportunity to focus on yourself, like, cause really that's what COVID was for me. Yeah. It's like, well, shit, there's a lot of noise that if I can just shut off my damn phone, yeah. go internal, like you've experienced, yeah. you can actually improve on yourself. I've been, I've been quite a bit, you know, I, uh, my, I'm, I'm, one of the things I've been saying is like, if, if, if 2020 has been a bad year for you, that might be a you thing. Yeah. You know, I mean like, uh, so I was, I was, um, you know, just kind of watching or some of my friends. It's like, um, I was talking to a friend the other day and he got laid off, but he's getting paid. Mm-hmm. His job is paying him and he doesn't go to work. So he is, he, he has been given the fucking priceless gift of time. Yep. Mm. Paid fucking time. Yep. Paid time to do whatever the fuck <laughs> you want to do. And what do they choose to do with that? drink and be lazy dude just be lazy that yeah. just be lazy you know and to to their um in their defense maybe that's what i did well you know like when i got kicked out i didn't do well i made a lot of mistakes and things right. like that but i did i also like it's a traumatic experience and yep. you're all yep. fucked up and things yep. like that but like i could have done other better things mm-hmm. but instead i chose to self destruct right. it's a weird human response so i'm not yeah. i'm not like oh if 2020 is hard for you it might be a you thing i'm not being mean right i i shit on myself for yep. you know like uh, my past behavior and i don't mm-hmm. recreate that but i was like you know it's like yeah so like the cfc one of your goals is to you know like bring that entertainment yep and t- t- but like just like so we enjoy what we're watching but also to fire us the fuck hundred percent because yeah. nothing gives you like that. Yeah. And it's like watching Spartacus, but CrossFit in real life, yeah. you know? yep. like watching Rocky. What yeah. is that? What does right. that feeling yeah. give you? Like, it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, we put, we made this entertaining so that yeah. when you see it, you're like, okay, well shit. And then you, 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 you give, then people get to know the stories, yep. the champions yep. and yep. things like that. And so it's just something to follow. And That's yeah, right. man, you know, just a little bit of fucking, Little little gas on an individual flame never you've been, fucking hurt. You've been nobody. posting videos of some of the athletes on the on Instagram too. Yeah, so which is at at the CFC. At, at the CFC live is our Instagram okay. as well. I'm and glad so, you got rid of those fucking underscores, dude. I know nothing tanks a page like underscores. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to find all kinds of different ways yeah. to find that without right, yeah. those, and finally I found yeah, one. Yeah, so shit. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, are are we also gonna stream it on my? Yes. Facebook, just in yeah. case, mm-hmm. like we would prefer that for, for, we would prefer if you guys want to watch and we'd like you to watch the competitive fitness championship yep. on Facebook. Super easy to find. I found it. I typed yep. it in. It was the first fucking yep. one. If you're having a hard time, my Facebook page will have the live stream yeah. that night as well. Yep. So yeah. I mean, cause fucking easy yeah. straight up. The honest truth is if I don't grow, we don't stay around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the more support we get, I mean, we've, we've been working our ass off just to try to bring this to the people and, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we take full responsibility for how it goes, but if if you enjoy it, let us know because that helps grow the, grow the, the opportunity. Yeah. You know, I really like the, uh, the comeback here and I, I like that you're, um, coming back small and smart. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So it's a good, that's some good advice. Yeah. <laughs> <Long way. laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, why well, yeah. are you, cool. how's, are you good? This with is awesome, your dude. Like is your interview. Your My oh, interview's I've, over there. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Cause <laughs> it's, it's 1130 on the money. Hell and yeah. We can start Nailed getting ready it. and we're going to go to the gym. Are you coming to I'm work coming. out? Yep. And we're going to race on our burpee box jump overs. I think I can nice. beat you. It's a little ambitious. I usually don't compete against people uh-huh. on burpee box jump overs. You're pretty quick though. But I'm getting pretty fucked. Yeah. Nice. But we'll see. Since COVID, I feel like, man, those those burpee like two <laughs> fills my body with peanut butter. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Awesome. Um, but uh, thanks for coming down, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Um, it, it was fun talking to you, and uh, I'm excited. Uh, 
to crawl back into my hole for the rest of the week Excellent. and uh, and see you on Saturday. Um, as always, thanks for listening, guys. We love you. We'll catch you next week. <laughs>